crustaceans. And, you know, being bitten by piranhas and having, you know, poisonous spider bites. Those are the basics. That's like saying, how do you get to know a tree? Sleep with the tree. Even my Native American friends in the United States told me that. You want to learn a plant? Sleep with it. What they never explained was sleeping with the plant meant, first, there's 12,000 bugs that live in that plant. And if you go sleep with that plant and try to dream, I'll dream the plant medicine. Sure. And that night, 2,000 ants come out and bite you and you run away. That's the end of your dream. The next night you come back and you say, okay, I'll deal with the ants. I'll deal with that. Okay. Now this night, 12 bats come out. And in the jungle of the Amazon, they all suck in your blood. They're vampire bats. They're not going to poison you, but they're down. You wake up really weak. The next night, something else comes. You'll never even get to the tree unless you get through its friends. So can you self-select? Yes. I don't think being born, I think being born indigenous would help because you're, you're born more quietly. But I think someone who's determined is determined. But how many people really end up, you know, uh, Radio City Rockettes? How many people try out for it? A million try. A million spend half their lives dancing. There's only 22, 23 women on that stage. So I don't, I, I don't, that's why I don't use the term shaman loosely. I think, I think it's a tough road. I think you won't really know you're there until you're probably too old to take advantage of it selfishly. Well, I, I did hear one time that if you ever called yourself a shaman, you're not. Interesting. We had a question. It uh, says, is shamanism uh, um, similar to our uh, modern day homeopathic medicine, you know, our homeopathic doctors? Uh, and is it, you know, from the past? And I, I'm I'm going to take a swag at this real quick here and just and say that as a sophisticated wild ass guest that maybe shamanism or the homeopathic doctors of our past and our future it uh, it it would seem to me that there's something here we we need to quiet ourselves and understand more than uh, more than just uh, thinking of it as a past or something that's comes from from the jungles or the uh you know the witch doctors of africa or something that that maybe this is this is our future or where we should head peter i i really do want to talk to you about stories of actual people that you've seen here but somewhere i heard once and and there there's a lot of controversy of course about marijuana and those you know the magic mushrooms and ayahuasca and those kinds of things You've you've made it real clear. These are medicines or teachers. I think I heard you say plant teachers. Now, is are th are there some plant teachers that are important for people? Are there some plant teachers that have more to teach us, and maybe some that really are just kind of for party effects or something? I. You know, I, I think people need to understand that maybe there is a hierarchy here of, of knowledge that, that can be uh, can be gleaned from these plants. All right. You're going to get me in hot water here. But here, full disclosure, I used to work for High Times, and I ran High Times for a while. Oh, yeah. You were the editor-in-chief of High Times, weren't you? For a short period of about seven months, I was editor-in-chief, but... I was executive editor for about 10 years and a senior editor before that. Do I think there are... What was High Times? High Times is the marijuana magazine. Marijuana? And it was also the news week of drug news because we were the only source for 25 years before the internet of drug news and, and the news of the drug war. So do I think... Yes, I think... Many, particularly cannabis, magic mushrooms are, uh, are, you know, these are wonderful teachers. I think they're also abusable. I think you can have a beautiful wife, and if you beat her every week, you're abusing her. So I don't, you know, most things are abusable. Now, in the hierarchy of plant teachers, I think there is a recognized one. I didn't come up with it. But there are several plants called master plant teachers 
And I'd rephrase that to be master plant teachers of man. And it just seems that not that the plant itself has the information, but the plant is kind of a sentinel at a doorway where an awful lot of information download can occur to the human being. And on that hierarchy, those master plant teachers are almost impossible to accidentally use and very difficult, very difficult. You really have to go out of your way if you want to abuse them. If you drink ayahuasca and think you're going to go out on a date and impress your date and serve a little ayahuasca, well, 15 minutes into it or 30, everybody's going to be throwing up and sitting on the floor. Datura, if you think you're going to impress a date, well, when you wake up 72, 96, 120 hours later, can't feel your fingers or your toes, and probably broke them, you know, while you moved around under the influence, you know, no, these are not abusable. The same way even marijuana, which is not considered at the same level of a teacher, but still a wonderful teacher, marijuana makes you cough. Marijuana smells a lot. Marijuana, you know, all of these plants have a way of saying, don't abuse me. Don't even use me if you don't know what you're getting into. And as you go to Datura, as you go to Ibogaine, as you go to Ayahuasca or San Pedro, those thresholds of uh, or peyote, those thresholds, anybody can eat a peyote plant. But you think peyote, a very bravo, very tough spirit, is going to give up what he knows to someone who just ingests a peyote button in the desert? Anyone can. Go to a Native American ceremony and eat 300 of them. Eat 200 of them. You can't. You have to really want to and you have to practice. And when you do, you'll be shown things that most people just would never see except maybe in dreams. But you'll be shown them while you're full waking consciousness and you'll be able to utilize those in real life. But you can't accidentally eat 50, 100, 200 peyote buttons. You just can't do it. Well, you can't do it for fun. You can't do it to, to impress a date. Remember, there's only three or four reasons in the whole world people would take what they call a drug. One, kill pain. That would be heroin. That would be morphine. You know, for physical sickness or emotional pain. Right. Okay. As a rule. One would be, pardon me, one is to have sex with a partner. That's alcohol. Oh, that would never happen. That's alcohol and cannabis. Some, like cannabis, are also for a spiritual end. You can get to a meditative place. You can get to a quiet place. You can broaden the broadbands of, uh, uh, of your sight and your sound and how you feel. You can look at the universe in a different way with cannabis. But you're probably not going to get laid on ayahuasca. You're probably not going to, you know, have somebody thrilled that you just... Probably not since you're throwing up all of it. Right. It's just one of those things. And these plants... So, yes, is there a hierarchy? Yes. And ayahuasca fits into the master plant teachers. <laughs> oh, too much information. All right, folks. I, 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 I re this really is a give and take here tonight. So I want to remind you, you can call in at 888 Nine one nine two three five five. All right, we're just about ready for the fun stuff. Peter's looking at his watch here. He wants to know when he's going to actually get to tell a story. I I have been blessed is the only word I I can actually use to know Peter Gorman for about twelve years. And to, to interject a personal story here, I um, I have been interested in all kinds of. Uh, of extraordinary phenomena uh, for most of my life, uh, be it UFOs or aliens or, you know, ESP or shamanism or whatever. I was a NASA scientist for a very long time and a biologist by training, a scientist by training. So I have, uh, I have uh, you know, had this scientist mentality and it, it has served me well in some ways, but in other ways it has kept me from uh, 
from maybe being objective enough and, and opening my mind to uh, to some of the possibilities of reality that, that seemed like fantasy to me. But I, uh, I, I've got to tell you that in, in knowing Peter and, and some of the, uh, the clients and some of the stories that I think he's going to tell us tonight uh, in the next part of this program, um, I've, I've become a believer in this technology that we don't understand that, that uh, as Arthur C. Clarke would say, is indistinguishable from magic. But uh, I, uh, I think we'll get to that in just a second. I want to, uh, I want to uh, remind folks that we uh, also have a chat room here that you can enter for your questions. And we also have, uh, you know, on the Inception Radio Network here. And we have a uh, telephone line, 888-919-2355. Peter, we've, we've talked about the fact that you know we've we've done the science let's let's get to the to the stories there are there are two kinds of medicines if we will and shamanism and journeys in peru that i know of there is uh there is the medicine and and the uh the shamans from the high andes which happen to be the second highest mountain range in the world second only to the himalayas uh, and they use San Pedro, which is a cactus. And then in the jungle, down in the lowlands on the Amazon River, uh, predominantly they use ayahuasca, which we've we've talked about. First of all, is there any difference in the kinds of experience people would have using a cactus teacher versus the the teacher from the jungle? And then we're going to get in to the stories about how people have actually been helped. Well, both San Pedro and Ayahuasca, according to people like Richard Schultes, uh, in, you know, the father of modern ethnobotany, he recognized them as they were considered master plant teachers. He didn't designate them as such. He re recognized that indigenous peoples recognized them as such. Is there a difference? Yes. Uh, San Pedro is, uh, this. I hope this doesn't sound too corny, San Pedro is a shapeshifter. It's a vibrational changer. It simply allows your body to vibrate at a different pace, which allows you to see the wave theory in action is all I can say. You can see the wave theory in action and you get to see things in different forms. That water isn't always just water. That mountains aren't always just mountains. And you get to see pretty incredible things out there once, once the vibration of your body changes to be more in tune with a universal vibration. Ayahuasca I believe is more about, in my world, the four magics, the healing blood, the life force of the green, the brightness of, of, of the illumination of the white, and the deep magnetic pull of, of the black magic. And um, so I, I, I think they're very different. Uh, I think they're the same family. But it would be silly if you had, even if you had seven identical twins, if they really were identical. So if you've got seven master plant teachers, or ten when somebody else gives us the next three that they've been holding on to and not exposing to us Westerners, or twenty, they might all be equally qualified and equally valuable, but they might all teach us or allow us to learn or be exposed to a slightly different way of viewing the universe so that our picture would get bigger and bigger and bigger. In other words, I think someone who does ayahuasca alone might have this wonderful broadened spectrum of being able to see and feel and hear. But I think someone who also then later would do San Pedro or work with San Pedro or peyote would have another way just as broad of seeing the universe. And I think the person is very lucky. I think where we get very lucky is that as Westerners, um, we frequently get to travel and experience both or three or four or use iboga. 
I mean, you know, uh, among the, the master plant teachers, I think it's wonderful to be able to to learn something of what each has to offer. Well, we are we are coming up on a break here in in just a minute. So, Peter, we've only got uh, we've only got about a couple of minutes, and we're going to take a break and stretch our legs. When we come back, however, what I would like to do now is a remind folks that we do we do have a chat room and we do have an opportunity to uh, to take questions from from listeners tonight. We also have a phone number they can call in to eight 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 nine one nine two three five five. But I want to talk now about the actual experiences. I want to know about the things that you've seen. I'd also like to know about the things that Madalena has seen uh, as as she has uh, has watched you work with your clients and with the patients, if you will, who've been using the medicine to change their lives. So that those are the kinds of things we're going to talk about. Actually, it's the good stuff that uh, that we're going to get into here. And in, uh, when we return, I want to remind folks that we are. Uh, we are here tonight with the uh, Inception Radio Network, and you are listening to our program tonight for the Extraordinary Phenomena Investigative Council uh, program on shamanism, technology we don't understand yet. And we will return after this. Well, welcome back to our show on the Inception Radio Network. I'm Lynn Chilson. We're here tonight with Peter and Madalena Gorman. Uh, we're talking about shamanism. We've been talking about the uh, technology that we don't understand yet, and we've actually been uh, doing the boring and dry part of the show trying to uh, make this a legitimate science. And now I want to do the fun stuff. And uh, you probably won't hear a whole lot out of me uh, now because I, I'm going to let Peter actually blow your mind because he has, uh, he has seen and done some things. And, and I will tell you, as a former NASA scientist, I can validate, and I, I will be glad to validate for you that, that the stories that, that he may share with you tonight, and I don't know yet what he will share. He doesn't even know yet. I can tell by the look in his face. Uh, but but these, these, are, uh, these are true stories in three-dimensional space-time, and, and uh, it is, or fourth-dimensional space-time, it, it, it is unbelievable. And, and the things are indistinguishable from magic. I, I got to admit that. Also, folks, I want to remind you that uh, beginning uh, around 9 o'clock, we're going to be available to take questions and answers. Uh, and the phone number is 888-919-2355. Peter, I have had the pleasure of knowing you and your teacher for about 12 years. And I, ha I know that people have been helped in so very many ways. And I'm going to let you just kind of run through your data bank here for just a second and think about some of the extraordinary events that have happened where Julio, or, or you for that matter, have accessed knowledge that may be at the quantum level, that may be at that vibrational level, that may be at whatever it is that we're trying to... Uh, to force fit here into science that actually have changed people's lives. I'm going to turn the tables on Mr. Chilson right now. In about 2000, Mr. Chilson was scheduled to go up with a company that organized trips to Canada for a conference. And I, if I don't have it wrong, I think he saw an ad that I was going to be running a trip to Peru. Now, at the time, I was either living in Peru with my family and my wife slash ex-wife, because we're not officially divorced, but we're not together. Um, uh, we'd run a bar in Iquitos, Peru, and we were raising our boys and baby Madeleine at the time. And uh, to help augment what we could make in the bar, I accepted that I would take some people out to see my teacher, Julio, the wonderful Cordendero, uh, an old man, and a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful teacher. And uh, Lynn Chilson asked the company, can I transfer from going to this conference to go to see Peter? I want to go in the jungle. I want to see what that's like. It's the Amazon jungle. 
This guy's got a pretty good reputation. He's a good writer. I've read his material. And Lynn joined me. Lynn announced, Peter, I'm a NASA scientist. I'm really gung-ho. I hope this works, but I think it's full of baloney. So Lynn came down, and we sat. And there might have been three or four people on that trip. Lynn was one of them, and I think there were three women on that trip, maybe four. And we sat in Julio's little raised platform hut, and uh, uh, it was time to drink ayahuasca, and we drank ayahuasca, just an ounce, two ounces each. And who, uh, I found this out at the end of the night. At the end of the night, Lynn comes to me, and he says, well, you know, I read your stories. I thought I was going to go talk to, you know, dead grandmas and dead grandpas. I thought I was going to talk to trees. I thought I was going to, but, you know, I'm a scientist, and that didn't happen, and I guess that's not going to happen. I said, Lynn, you mean you didn't get anything from the whole night? And he said, well, I, no, I didn't get anything. I said, you didn't have a visionary experience. He said, nope. Well, I had this one thing. I said, well, what was your one thing? He said, well, Julio was sitting on his little stool. Now, Julio was about four foot six at this point, And he was shrunk a lot more by the time he died three years ago. But he was a tiny little fisherman. He sat on this tiny little stool that was four inches off the ground. He said, nothing was happening to me. And the women were all lying down going, mm, 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 they were moaning in some sort of, I didn't know what kind of ecstasy. And I said, Julio, is all this baloney? Is that everything that Gorman's written, that the other people have written that I've read? Is it all just made up so that they con us to come down here for these trips and pay them money? And he said, at that point, Julio turned to him, stood up, grew to be 14 feet tall, began spinning his chakras in beautiful colors with lights flashing off all of the chakras, landing on Lynn. And then Julio, in an English, which he didn't speak, but which Lynn could understand, said, now do you mind if I get back to the work I was doing on the women? That's a true story. And then he sat back down and went back to work on the women. And then I said, well, okay, for a guy who didn't get anything, that's not bad. Did you get anything else? And he laughed and he said, well, I mean, there was one little thing. I said, well, what's the one little thing? Because I'd had an extraordinary night. And he said, well, there was one point where Julio stood up and he stood your cook up, a woman named Corina, and he took her heart out of her and put it in me, took my heart out of me and put it in her. And then... I saw us walking down the aisle getting married. Now, that was silly because Lynn at the time was in Peru partly to try to reconcile a marriage. And nonetheless, as silly as he thought that was, two months later, he married Karina, my cook. So, do extraordinary, extraordinary things happen with ayahuasca? Yes, very extraordinary. I've got a fellow who is a world bodybuilder, a world champion bodybuilder, cover of lots of magazines. And he was he's still a young fellow, 30 years old. He came on one of my trips years ago. He had a great, great personality, just an oversized kid with a, a, a immense and fantastic physique that he'd spent 20 years putting together. He'd also been on the cover of, it was either Fortune or Forbes magazine, as someone who had made a fortune in going to depressed areas, buying houses. Now, this is it's probably a bad thing now, but 10 years ago, this was considered a good thing. Go to a depressed neighborhood, buy up houses, refurbish them, sell them for a profit, but still sell them affordably. And so this guy had done such a good job. He was on the cover of a major magazine for having done it. And uh, probably six or eight months after his trip with me and his time with Julio, he wrote me a quick note, and in it said, Peter, I just want to tell you, every day before the trip, I woke up and wondered, is this the day I put the gun in my mouth and pull the trigger? And every day 
since that trip. I wake up and say, thank God, what a great day to be alive. To me, that's healing. That's healing on a very deep level. That's a guy who spent a week and a half in the jungle. Two nights with the medicine. That's all. It, If I recall, you had a client who had incurable cancer and had a few weeks to live. And it, it seems to me you actually told this client that they couldn't come on a tour with you because you didn't want them dying on your watch. What happened with her? This was a woman from Australia who was uh, very high up in the National Library there. And that, that a very well-respected, very intelligent woman. Got in touch, was dying, as Lynn said. And I said, you're not going to die in the jungle. What am I going to do with you? You come down, you die, and then they put me in jail. Well, she talked, she talked, she insisted, she insisted. And I finally said, I'll tell you what. If you let me get you at least one more Christmas with your daughter, which would be like at least six more months, which means she wouldn't be dead on my watch, you can come. And she finally said, okay, I'm not going to get six months. I'm going to get two, three weeks. But if you want me to say it, okay, I will root to try to get myself one more Christmas with my daughter. And so she came down to the jungle. I took her out. This woman, a very elegant, wonderful, nice lady, hated me. She hated my trip. She hated the river. She hated the boat ride that was, at the time, 17 hours to get to where we were going. She hated bathing in the river because showers aren't allowed on my trips. She hated everything. She drank ayahuasca. Now, Julio always said, I said, Julio, she's got cancer. Can you fix it? He said, no, because cancer is cold and ayahuasca is hot. And they just, they're not going to work together. He said, well, that doesn't mean I can't do something. Let me see. So she drank and Julio drank. Now, here's something you've got to know about medicine, the way it's perceived in South America. Physical disorders, whether it's bad luck or run of bad luck or emotional problems or physical illness, they are seen as symptoms of something that is wrong on another level of reality. Normally, the Cordero, when it comes to healing, he drinks the ayahuasca, not the patient. He accesses that other level of reality, sees what's wrong, and comes back either with plant medicines that can cure something physical, or he comes back with a way for you to heal yourself. Now, it's still going to be up to you to do it. In this case, the woman drank and said, I will never drink again. I am a lady, and I threw up. I don't throw up in public. She knew.